I'm going to review the Panther G Early Panzer Regiment 26 Italian Front Cyber Hobby, which is sort of a, it's like a Cyber Hobby centric dragon. Like it's not an orange box or anything, it's just released underneath the Cyber Hobby name, which I think that I've read means that it's going to be a, there's only a single run of it or something, so it's relatively rare. I didn't actually even know it existed, I saw it at a show and bought it, so I was like, hey, never heard of that. Um, so the way that the the lineage for this guy goes, in 2006, um, there was a late G that came out, 6268, very good. Um, and then in 07, there was a steel wheel version, and then this one, So and this was in, in 2008. So it's relatively old, I guess, considering it's like seven years old. And then the only other Panther Gs you can get from Dragon, besides those three, are 6384, the Zim version of the initial tooling, and then there was a Black Knight Cyber Hobby one, 6659, I think, in 2011. So there's not that many Panther Gs. There's Panther Fs and and the uh, a lot of versions of those premium or altered parts for the Ds and the As. Although the way, there may be a new D com coming out, but it may just be another retooling of that old kit. But the G was a new tooling, and then so this is like the third in the series. The thing that is particular uh, to this kit is it has this. Um, standoff armor sort of stuff, these double metal plates on the turret roof, uh, which is all done in photo etch and some brass pins, and that's real cool, but I've seen pictures, I did a little research on this unit, they also did it on the rear, but this kit only comes with it on the turret roof, so if I want to make this accurate, I'm going to have to get aftermarket for the engine deck, or I could do it by hand, I guess. Um, let's check out their suggested camo, standard tritonal, which I like. Not crazy about the way the numbers are. All red, 222, right there. I don't like where it is. I don't like the color. Uh, I come from an art background, and sometimes I just find things to be eh, gross looking, and I didn't like that. Um, so here is our <laughs> with exemplary weld patterns. I like that. Uh, there's the, the PE I'm talking about in question. New additional armor on turret roof made of metal for maximum authenticity. Uh, that's nice looking. So... New cable heads for track changing cable on all the Tamiya Panthers. This is just wound brass wire, which is wicked that it's brass. Uh, and by wound, I mean it's just wound in a circle. It's not braided like that. Um, row wheel arrangement specifically represents Panther G early. I'm not sure what that means. If they mean that there's not a steel in the rear, most Panthers had these standard rubber wheels in that configuration. I know there were two types of idlers. I think this may only have the one. So there's a better look at how the the roof armor is composed, two separate plates and all these brass pins, kind of like mounting a motherboard if any of you guys build computers. Um, magic tracks and then for sprockets on things like the Panther, you need to use these with the separate uh, guide horns, which is super annoying actually. Early type of exhaust with the covers, not the, the flame hiders or whatever. This is done in plastic, not photo etch think something, because I don't like, that's pretty complicated on the premiums. Very minimal etch besides the roof armor too, you've just got these, these two grills and then these four, so you, you don't get the grill with a hole in it, so you're not supposed to use the crew heater tower. Alright, so the instructions I'll go through somewhat quickly. Um, the amount of blue and unused parts there is Meh. It's, it's variant based. You can tell by looking at this. And I guess maybe since I've built Panthers before, I have a better idea of what I'm looking at than you, but if you haven't, at least from Dragon. These are parts for the crew heater tower. I recognize them. The little pie shaped pieces and then the six pointed thing. And that's like the covered version of it. Uh, those are a variant of hatches. And then these are the late exhausts. So essentially, and then there's the other part of the crew heater. So those are just like, and then here's a chin mantlet versus a rounded mantlet. Since this is an early G, you'd want to use the rounded one, not the chin one. So all the stuff that's blued out isn't like totally wrong. It's just, I guess you could treat it as optional if you wanted to. All right. Ooh, that was giving me a hard time. 
doesn't want to fold. Okay, so there's the idler in four pieces. Here you're putting the fans together with the housing they sit in, and the sprockets in each wheel. Some different types of torsion bars that go into these things, I believe. There's like different, they're slightly different. Oh, those might have been the stops. I'm not sure what they're telling me to do up there. I have not built this kit yet, so. Sometimes I think people shouldn't do reviews until they've actually built something. There's a little nugget for you. Um, so torsion bars, swing arm assembly going into here, final drive housings. There should be two types in the kits usually, with and without a little return roller on it. Um, the sort of sponsons getting glued up into the, the lower hull there. Um, right, so I'm not putting wheels on, so moving on. Standard heavier jack assembly. The rear plate, you're doing jack and exhausts. Uh, some tiny little bits, but doesn't look too difficult. I'm not sure why that's blue. Uh, here you're doing the stowage bins for the rear. These are much better on Dragon Kits than Tamiya. Uh, there's very, very little detail in this area for Tamiya stuff. So you're putting those on the rear plate. I'm not sure what that angle's about, but it's trying to make sure I notice something. Some sort of alignment issue. Um, so you've got a relatively complex standard Hall MG. That's interesting. You can cap it off apparently if you want. Some interior detail for these hatches, which is cool. Not a lot though. Yep, alright, so gun travel lock stuff and periscope cover. Barrel cleaning rod and accessory tube. There's always kind of a seam on this. Um, but it mounts into here with this crowbar. The engine cover, or whatever they exactly call that, I'm not sure. Here we've got all the PE going on. It doesn't even list the, the heater tower as an option. So you see etch in the, the smaller um, vent assembly here and there as well. Uh, late Panthers would have had that. Same goes for Yag Panthers. So all of these things getting their PE and then going into the rear deck. These tiny little fender bits here then go on to these mountings here. And all these little sub-assemblies look like they go on here. The tool racks track changing cable, some spare tracks going on to this thing once it's on. Usually in these Dragon ones, the jack block and the jack block's like holder are separate, which is very cool, especially for painting purposes. Other side, um, tool, rack tool, tool rack assembly, headlight, which always has conduit with Dragon. I always have to use a staple to do that in Tamiya, so I'm very grateful for that. I just wish they'd give me extra ones so I could cannibalize them. But we're finishing up the upper hall there, then we go to gun. Pretty simple. Uh, this is actually very, very similar to the way Tamiya does it. Must have something to do with the way that the, the guns are designed on Panthers. But these two big pieces go onto that huge barrel. Um, and then your sort of two-piece mantlet thing. I think I've read in the past that they, they suggest you put this through once the the muzzle brakes on, and I don't know if you can even do that, so I would probably put the barrel through here and then put the muzzle brake on. That's just me. Uh, the MG mount for the cupola. They're having me cut some things off of the mantlet. The hatch assembly for the escape hatch, or possibly loading. I'm not sure what that hatch is used for on the rear. Uh, close support weapon, or whatever that's called. There's the cupola getting put together. All the rest of the turret bits, pretty standard. It's a lot of steps to this guy. Um, these come, I, th I think these are metal for spare track hanging on the turret. Yeah, MC usually refers to metal. Uh, this little rain guard or whatever this is, splash guard above the mantlet. And then here's where they're having us do the specific to this kit stuff with the big PE pieces and these little standoffs. Telling us to put spare tracks in the turret. 
options for the barrel travel lock. And then finally the upper hull gets put down over the lower hull. They're telling you do magic tracks, but then make sure you use from here to here, you use the separate ones, because there's some issue with the drive sprockets fitting with the tracks, so you have to use those separate guide horn silos. It's a larger hole. Excuse the noise. And then here is our uh, tow cable arrangement, which I really, really like, actually, when they wrap around, and I usually hook them to this piece here, not to here, but whatever. Or is that an option? Yeah, it's an option. To, it's right next to me. Um, so there's that, and then there's our markings, which are just the tritonal one. I'm sure there's a number jungle of a couple of different numbers in there. Yeah, there is. So, but they're 444, 222, and 333. Okay, so the tracks in this kit are magic tracks. They are late panther tracks, because they have ice cleats, and they have hollow, hollow guide horns. By the way, I've always been confused how they could do this for panthers, but not do it for tigers. Super confusing. However, um, these are not handed. Panthers should have handed tracks, uh, but at the same time, if you look at pictures, a lot of times tanks would have their tracks on the wrong way, because you can do that, so it doesn't really matter. Um, the last panther tracks I did, I used the Bronco, um, supposedly clickable, which they weren't, and they were they were a huge pain. Um, so either free or, or magic tracks are preferable for me. So these will be fine. Uh, I don't mind if they're one-handed and, and not both ways. Uh, the dragon card is rather large in this guy. Uh, we got lots of different bits. So in this bag here, we've got some brass standoffs and some metal hooks for the spare tracks. Oh, sorry, the brass standoffs and the uh, metal hooks were in a different bag than the uh, tow cable. Here we have uh, our cupola by itself. We've got different size eyelets for tow cables. I always like the giant ones. Here we've got our standard PE. It comes with all of the Panther Gs, I believe. Maybe not the late, but... And then here is our PE for this specific variant. It's got some interesting... <laughs> burn mark in it. I'm not sure what... That's very thick. Holy cow. Like, I'm not sure how to convey to you how thick this is, but that is monstrous. That is not... Like, this is standard PE. Like, I can... I don't want to bend it, but, like, I can bend it. This, like... That is very solid. It's heavy, too. Um, there's some more brass standoffs up here. There's our periscopes and light bits by the, the look of it, convoy light tube. Uh, ball mounted MG for the front, pretty standard little sprue, and then the number jungle of fours, threes, and twos. Pretty substantial dragon card, you gotta love kits from that era. In no particular order are sprues. This guy I've seen in multiple Panther G's, this labeled Panther G. It has the two spare steel wheels, which there's like one picture of a Panther with its rear wheels as steel, so now you see that it's a variant, people talk about it. These are the multi-part bits for the flame uh, hiding bits of the exhaust, which aren't used. We use these types of exhausts. Um, there is our sprocket, both sides, and the armored extension bits the two different types of final drive housings, and some tiny little pieces. Everything looks good. Uh, again, this is a very common sprue in Panthers. We get four of the suspension sprue, so four copies of this guy. Here we have um, the swing arms on the torsion bars. I know maybe that decreases detail. I, for some reason, prefer this. I don't know why. I think because I know that these are these work better because there's no glue here. So I like when you do a workable suspension, I think these are the way to go. Here you've got some bump stops and then the tracks with um, separate guide horns are right there and some of those guide horns are not there. Super. I don't know where they went. I didn't check the bag. 
but one can assume that's where they are. Apparently they're very fragile, and there's some tiny little, uh, whatever those are, butterfly-looking turny things. I don't, I, I, I don't work with tools and stuff, so I don't really know what those are called. My apologies. You know, the, like there's one on the antenna. Anyway, so there's four of these sprue. The wheels look very, very solid. Um, I'd like to do some comparisons with, with Tamiya stuff. I don't have any Tamiya wheels over here right this second, so I can't compare that. This is our sprue with the rear plate. This stuff is molded on, so they could probably do that separately now, but it looks really good. Here's our part for the, the crew heater. It has um, six pieces that are pie-shaped, that are covers, and I think they, they put them on for differing levels of like heat escaping. Like it, it seems really simple, but and then here they are all closed. So the top of that heater, I have another dragon one just sitting here. So this is that this piece, which is on a different sprue, which is weird. And I don't even think I cleaned it up yet. No. So this piece, you put this little six part guy in there, and then this lip on top of it. Or this one, which represents it all closed up. So these are these six things stacked up three by three with this little piece here in the middle. Um, Tamiya's offering of this looks like this, and there's never any PE for it. My One of my gripes with it is just the way that it sits. Like, it just doesn't look right. So I'm really, really glad to have this kit, which has a spare, because I'm going to use it for this Tamiya Panther G I've been working on. Um, also worth noting is that the way that this one sits, that is the correct way it, it like snaps in that way when you're when you're putting it in. That's the angle that it goes at. Um, the Bovington Panther G that was made after the war at the factory has it like that. I think it's just messed up, like bent or whatever. And that's what Tamiya based a lot of their their moldings on is what the vehicles at Bovington look like. So it's actually incorrect. Uh, it should be straight across. It shouldn't be cockeyed like that. It drives me crazy. In this particular version. I tried to straighten it by like carving out interior bits. I can't get this off right now. Whatever. I tried to fix it, so I'm going to replace it with a Dragon one. And that's why I was very happy to see spare parts in this kit when I got it, because I needed this and this and this piece, which is a, that's a separate piece for the heater. So this piece goes up against this piece here. None of that is used in this kit, so I was very excited. Uh, I'm a spare parts junkie, so... Uh, back to the parts that are used. There's two different types of fans. I'm going to guess that's based on when the thing was made. And there's not a whole lot else on this sprue. It's pretty simple. So fans, some unused heat crew tower. I mean, if I didn't explain that, that's what this thing is. It goes on a panther. You've got vents, right? And then this which has to do with heating the fighting compartment. I'm not exactly sure how, but I've seen a diagram before. But So if this is on, that's a crew heater. It's only usually on later vehicles. So that's what's on a lot of this sprue. Here we've got the turret, the gun, slide molded one piece. Um, and breech pieces, lots of turret stuff, primarily. Um, let me just complain real quick. I don't like it when turrets are, or, or hulls are attached like this. I feel like they could do them separately. They're a hell to clean up for me. So let's have a look at some parts closer here. Everything seems very, very clean. There's the jack block, which I think this is the one that already has the the mounting pieces on it, so there's two options for that. There's our turret MG, which looks a little mangled. Uh, there's the... It actually has the teeth in the turret. I love that. So it won't lock in, but it'll look more accurate. This piece is... Molded on? Hmm, that's different than the way I've seen it before. The welds on the turret look very, very good. So there you can see welds where the two plates, like the upper plate and the side plates, meet. Since I have one here, we'll do some quick comparison with Tamiya. There's a little bit in there, but not as good, in my opinion. I 
I prefer dragon's welds. They're, maybe they're a little bit too big, one might even say, but they, they read, which is important. Um, there you've got muzzle brake, the breech, and as I said earlier, it's very similar to the way Tamiya does their breeches as well, at least for the Panther. Usually their breeches are terrible. Tammy ones are okay. So this feels a little bit old, the way that this is molded. Like, I feel like anything, that, uh, this kit was in 2008, so but I feel like anything, you know, 2010 or later, they wouldn't have been putting this stuff like this. These would have been separate and bagged. and So even just the layout of this sprue type feels a little old to me. There's that guy. So we got two of these as well. Here is the late type exhausts, which we don't use. Uh, I will save those to upgrade some Tamiya stuff because there's Tamiya's version of that exhaust and they're not as good. There's some little, like you can see the hole, the slit in the bottom, it's just not as good. So, there's the idler. These are the closed vents for a, or louvers for a later panther, so again we won't use those. Lots of teeny little bits. These are for holding spare track links on the upper hull and the rear. Lots of tiny little stuff. All looks good though. Here's our upper hull. Alright, so... The welds look very, very good to me. Everything seems very, very crisp. Again, I'll compare it with its Tamiya counterpart, which, my apologies, is built. <laughs> there is welds on the side here with Tamiya, but not in the front like there is here. Yep. Yeah. The Dragon one is significantly more detailed, in my opinion. He's just, this is smooth. This has a rolled steel texture. Uh, there's just more welding in here. There's this little half circle cut there, which Tamiya kind of half did. So, and there's our two engine uh, hoods. Deck, motor deck cover. I don't know, that thing covers the engine. <laughs> But again, this is a super big pain to clean up because you're at this angle, especially on something like a Panther. I mean, it's, it's planar, but it's planar at an angle and it, it just seems like a huge pain for me to clean up. Maybe I'm just terrible, but. Here's the other piece with that, um, the part I showed you before, the crew heater tower thing. Here's the welded and cast versions of the armored exhaust covers. Here, right here. Barrel travel lock, ball or the 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 hull MG, periscope cover, the tool racks. These are these really really fine spare track holder things with the tiny little holes in it. I tried to scratch build these before, huge pain. So I really like those. That's amazing. And then this is the jack block here, without this thing on it. And this is the thing that it sits in, which luckily in this particular case is not warped. I've had it warped before. Um, there's the, the tube for the barrel cleaning stuff, and our sponsons, which look good. And then a bunch of tiny bits again. Looks pretty good to me, though. So, mantlets. This panther should have this standard rounded mantlet. Now, one thing I want to point out while I have that Tamiya kit over here is you've got this ruled steel texture and you've got these two detail bits there. This is the Tamiya equivalent of that. Very, very smooth. Actually, it goes that way, excuse me. So, if you compare them, 
the texture on the dragon one is just better. There is some texture on the Tamiyo one, but it's not as good. And that's what we're going to use. It comes with a chin mantlet as well, which is way superior to this Tamiyo one, which is pretty boring and blank. I wish I hadn't used it. If I could rip it off, I would. I just think I damaged the kit. And then there's our stowage things for the rear. They look really good. So you won't use this chin mantlet. That'll be my second one in the spares. Lower hull. Very, very good. That's where the torsion bars go. Everything looks pretty good to me. Oh, it says Panther G right in the inside. Some injector pin marks in there, but that does not matter. Some of the bump stops are molded on. Other ones are not. So, very solid hull, though. That's what they use in all the Panther Gs. Uh, and lastly, here we've got some tools to fit in those racks. There's a larger type multi-part jack. The clamps look good on here. We've got hammer, the axes, the shovels, towing clevis, and there's the light thing with the conduit. Everything looks pretty solid. That's the end of this review. That is Panther G Early Panzer Regiment 26 Italian Front. Um, yeah, I like it um, for a kit that I didn't know that I was going to get. It's a nice surprise uh, to find it as cheap as I did, to be honest. I You can get stuff like this for about 20, 25 bucks at a show, whereas it would be, I don't know, 40, 45, anywhere else. Um, if I do it this way, and I think I will, because I've got a G, an early G with Zimmerit, and then I had this, this is my late um, Tamiya one that I'm doing, so I've got room to do a non-Zimmed um, early G with this, but I'd like to get this stuff, but like the Alliance set to do the, the rear display is expensive, so I'm not sure what I'll do yet. And I don't think I'll, I'll build this soon, but that's what's in there. Thanks, guys.